excited states have vibrational structure. That's the major point of this video. Just like ground states, Ground states have access to various vibrational modes. We can measure, observe, investigate those using infrared spectroscopy. And in fact, the same is true of excited states. And this is a point that is sometimes obscured on state energy diagrams that plot the energies of the various electronic states as a function of electron configuration. So for example, a typical state energy diagram might look like this. And this doesn't show the vibrational levels within each electronic state. Even when vibrational levels are shown, they often obscure the fact that a large organic molecule has access to a very large number of vibrational modes. So for example, if you see a series of closely spaced or equally spaced lines, this corresponds to a single vibrational mode under the harmonic oscillator approximation. And generally speaking, organic molecules have access to a variety of vibrational modes, as we'll see later on in this video. Considering the vibrational structure of its excited states is very important in appreciating photophysical transitions, and in particular, non-radiative transitions. We'll see the reasons for this later in the course, but for the time being, I'll just state that non-radiative transitions generally happen horizontally between states of equal energy. And if we're talking about a transition that's uphill in energy, for example, from the T1 state to the S1 state, that has to involve an excited vibrational level of the T1 state. For example, if we want to transition to S1, we need to have something like you know, five vibrational quanta of excitation in order for that to happen in a non-radiative manner. And so we want to appreciate what kinds of vibrations are accessible to T1 and whether it's reasonable to expect T1 to occupy that vibrational level, facilitating a transition to S1. So the first point we should make here is that excited states have various vibrational modes, and there is vibrational structure within each potential energy surface or electronic state level. There are a variety of vibrational levels that the molecule can occupy, and they're shown here as the horizontal lines. Now, briefly, I'll just mention that the fact that these are equally spaced and relatively close together has to do with how we conceive of molecular vibrations. We can basically approximate each of these wells as a parabola, and that's key to the harmonic oscillator approximation. We assume that the molecule basically acts like a harmonic oscillator as it vibrates. As vibration happens, the nuclei change positions. So we can imagine, for example, a representative point moving back and forth from one side of the well to the other as it vibrates. And each of these vibrational levels has a specific wave function. So let's blow that up for the excited state and look at a couple of these. So for example, if we look at the nu equals zero level, the uh, ground vibrational level, we might see a wave function that looks like this with no nodes from one side of the well to the other. As we move up in energy, nodes begin to appear. And this has an important effect on wave function overlap, which is going to become important when we look at the Frank Condon principle a little bit later in the course. And by the time we get up very high, we see very large, well, first of all, the well gets wider, and we see very large oscillations from one side to the other. And so there are a large number of nodes, and we see at a given point, there is less wave function density because of the oscillations back and forth that occur in these high energy vibrational wave functions. So we'll unpack these vibrational wave functions in future videos when we need to know more details about the vibrational structure. For the time being, the important point is just keeping in mind that these exist. And of course, here we focused on the excited state vibrational modes, but the ground state has a series of vibrational modes as well. Quite often, the excited state vibrational levels are more closely spaced than the ground state levels. The reason being the excited state is more loosely bound, the bonds are weaker, and so the vibrations are lower in energy. Let's take a quick look now at some of the vibrational modes in a molecule that we will return to time and time again, acetone. So acetone has a wide variety of vibrational levels available to it. We can get a sense of that if we looked at, at this calculated vibrational uh, IR spectrum. And everywhere where you see a peak, of course, corresponds to a distinct vibration. And I've calculated using WebMO the various types of vibrations. Now, the, the most um, familiar vibration of the carbonyl group is this CO stretching vibration. And this is one type of vibration 
that we see. Note here that the symmetry of the molecule is maintained throughout this vibration. So this molecule has a plane of symmetry that is right here perpendicular to the plane of the screen. That's maintained as this vibration occurs, and that's going to be true of most vibrations. They will be symmetric or anti-symmetric with respect to the symmetry elements of the molecule. We can look at other vibrations, for example, CH vibrations, CH stretching vibrations uh, at a higher energy around 3000 wave numbers. These should be familiar from prior studies of infrared spectroscopy. And at lower energies, we get bending, wagging vibrations, things of this type that involve uh, kind of subtle motions of the entire molecular framework. So these kinds of vibrational modes are available to molecules and they do have the effect of moving the electrons. And this is gonna be profoundly important to appreciate as we develop first order corrections to our zero order picture of electronic structure. These vibrations can, uh, for example, introduce orbital overlap where there is none if we don't consider vibrational motion like this. And this allows us to rationalize the appearance of certain transitions, for example, that would be forbidden without consideration of the vibrational structure. So this is why it's important to consider vibrations. One last point that I'll make about vibrations before closing this video is that, generally speaking, vibrational relaxation is very rapid. And in particular, if we're talking about vibrational relaxation in a higher excited state, let's say S2, it's extremely rapid. So let's go ahead and, and draw a hypothetical uh, vibrational manifold for S2 here. So here's an S2 potential energy surface with a series of vibrational levels. Vibrational relaxation to the ground vibrational level is very rapid here, as is the conversion of S2 back to S1. And this occurs actually through vibrational relaxation as well. It's a non-radiative process. S2 becomes S1 and then rapidly relaxes down to the ground vibrational level of S1. This process of the upper singlet state S2 converting to a lower singlet state in a non-radiative way is called internal conversion. And it's an important non-radiative decay process for excited states. So S1, for example, can undergo internal conversion to convert to S0 without emission of a photon. And this can compete, for instance, with fluorescence, the emission of a photon to convert from S1 to S0. Briefly here, I'll, I'll mention an important rule of thumb for upper excited states. We can represent those in general as Sn, where n is greater than one. Sn to S1 internal conversion is very fast, very fast. In particular, relative to almost any other process that Sn can do, S and S1 internal conversion is very fast. So typically, photochemical reactions happen from S1 because even if we excite to S2 or S3 or S4, internal conversion back to S1 is very fast. This is an empirical rule known as Kasha's rule. There are a few notable except exceptions that we may or, or may not see, but as a rule of thumb, this is good to keep in mind. And it's all about non-radiative transitions and vibrational relaxation. Internal conversion is rapid and vibrational relaxation is very rapid. And both of these combine to convert higher level singlet or higher level triplet states for that matter back to S1 and T1.